A few months back, I made a video where I looked at SSL Complete. Well, the news broke that SSL and Slate Digital have partnered together, and they're now offering the greatest period subscription period to date period. And I guess somebody happened to stumble across my channel and see my last video because they've now invited me to try this new offering and share my thoughts with you guys watching. Now I've got a ton of feedback to give and there's a lot to unpack. But before we go any further, I need you to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and at some point during the video, leave a comment below, let SSL, let Slate know what your thoughts are on this new bundle, and give me some feedback on this video as well. I'd really appreciate it. All right, so quick offer alert. I'm trying to keep this video as evergreen as possible, so if you're watching this video a year from now, it still makes sense. However, at the time of making this video, at the time of releasing this video, there's a special Black Friday offer going on. There's a link in the description that tells you all about it. It goes live from November 20th to 28th, and I'm telling you, it is a great deal. So keep on watching this video, keep rolling to find out why. So I think overall, there's plenty of reasons to be excited about this partnership. For one, I think this partnership is really good for this whole industry. I think it's really pushing the bar forward in terms of value and what's expected out of a subscription platform and bundle, especially if subscriptions are gonna stick around and be a thing for the immediate future and going forward. And I really think that Slate and SSL are kind of the trailblazers here. You got one offering from one team, you got one offering from the other, and now they're fused together in some sort of plug-in fusion. And I know that they're under the same umbrella at this point, but there's no reason that other companies can't take note and employ this kind of thinking and ultimately work to give us the end user who love and cherish all of our toys in our studios just a tad more value. Because let's face it, I think all of us, the developers of these plugins, the creators of the hardware, it's, it's all about the music and making the music. That's what we're all here for making music, having fun making music. So, but number two, most importantly, there's never been a more complete, more professional subscription bundle than this to date. The truth is, is that there's not a one size fits all approach when it comes to making music. And I always equate it to this, a hammer is a hammer. Well, not really. There's different types of hammers for different types of jobs. And the same thing applies to the studio. Take for example, a de -esser. It's very common that I'll reach for my favorite de but every now and then, when I reach for my favorite de and try to use it, it's just not quite doing the job, and then I have to reach for a different one. But if all I had was one bundle of plugins that only had one de well then I'm kinda SOL. And as engineers, that's why we collect so much gear, so many different plugins. It's having options so you have the right tool for the right job, and in this bundle, you get a whole bunch of different algorithms, you get a whole bunch of different processors. So it's extremely professional to have those different tool sets under your belt. And finally, number three, I'm really stoked to just try out some of these Slate plugins. There are some really cool ones that I've been dying to try, particularly that I think it's called the FG36 or something like that. It's based off of these uh, 361s that I have sitting in my rack. And there aren't really any plugin versions of that out there. There's only two that I can think of and Slate is one of them. So again, itching to try it and now we get to try it out together. So let's actually go through some problematic scenarios and show you how this bundle solves those problems. Okay, so right off the bat, the first thing that I'm just dying to try out is the model of these 361s. Uh, and again, I think it's called the FG36. We'll pull it up here and just shortly, but the quick backstory on it is that it's I mean, it's been in a lot of stuff. Um, it's kind of that secret sound to that huge 80s group of vocals, like the Def Leppard kind of thing. You can use it on a drum bus and like bring a bunch of life and character out into the drum bus. But obviously I think the biggest, most famous thing is like that big background vocal thing. And I just love, so I've got an example of it here and uh, we're gonna show you how to get there. So obviously, first off, you gotta have a bunch of stacks of vocals and you kinda almost want them to be a bit loose in terms of their pitch, right? So it just sounds like a big group of people. So he here is that group of people on their own. Right? Big group of people, very energetic, obviously yelling. So first thing is pulling up virtual mix rack. If you hover over it, it does give you like a little background on the unit, which I like that. I think that that's really cool. I love those little tidbits. It says make your top end sparkle with this faithful emulation of one of the most popular exciters from the 1960s with just two knobs. And it's funny because 
with the real units, there aren't, there's a little calibration thing in the cards, like this little piece comes off, but you just turn it on, you just turn it off. It's super simple, and if you were to use this, it's super simple, right? It's on or off, and then the intensity is like kind of how much of the effect is happening to your signal, right? So, so let's listen to this sound and kind of just bring it in. My life, I keep living it. I've been running like a train of trade. Wild time, it keeps ticking. So you can really hear that it gets very hyped, very aggressive. So let's bring it in context with the rest of the mix here. So what we've got here is just like a rough songwriter demo uh, that was thrown together here. A bunch of tracks, pretty rough, but um, this should do the trick in terms of giving you guys an idea of what it will do and sound like in context of a mix. So here's before. Okay, cool. So like super hyped right out in front. Um, of course, so far in this project, there's nothing going on, no plugins anywhere, um, except I do have a meta tune right up front on the lead vocal, but we've got a, we've got a lot of work to do to the lead vocal and try to balance this mix overall. But um, I'm just really stoked with this particular plugin right off the bat, but we're not even close there. Like we still need to add some sort of like vibe and delay and effects because there's a lot of delay in the 80s. So to do that, we're gonna use an SSL plugin. Let's throw on the SSL uh, X delay. We'll probably just want like a quarter note kind of thing. And I really like this delay. I, I, it's kind of like, it's like an analog digital kind of thing. You can saturate it, you can, uh, it's got a built-in DS function so the S's don't get in the way. Love that, that's really cool. And it's got modulation, so I mean, width knob, high pass, low pass, all the stuff that you'd really need to create a killer delay sound. Yeah, we're gonna wanna shorten this up. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty close there. Uh, let's turn off the ping pong and then just have them panned. Okay, that's a little bit clearer to me, so I kind of like that, that's cool. I like it, we're keeping it. Moving along here, uh, let's get these lead vocals kind of where they need to be. Let's get a bit of brightness going on these lead vocals and let's listen to those. Then, oh, life, I keep living it. I've been running like a train off track. All right, now we're going to throw on some compression with the mix rack. And let's just go modern 76. Uh, and we're obviously going to go with this guy. It looks like this is going to be like kind of like a CL1B kind of thing. The uh, thing that I like about this after toying with it is these little tone options. Um, so we'll, we'll fool around with that. But we're going to go pretty heavy handed with the compression 12 to 1. Fool around with the circuit, see if we like that. And also let's bypass this guy first. So set this guy and then set this guy with it. So then, oh life, I keep living it. I've been running like a train off track. Oh time, it keeps ticking. But it's all I have. I'm living, never looking back. In. Oh, life, I keep living it. I've been running. All right, I think we're pretty good there. In. Oh, life, I keep living it. We've got that. Let's see if we can add a little bit of verb here on this vocal. So they have uh, 480 uh, 224s. I love the 224s. Keep living it. I've been running like a train off track. Oh, time 
keeps ticking, but it's all I have. I'm living. Yeah, that's cool. Let's see if we can do anything to these drums here. Mix rack, we're coming back. We're gonna see what that 361 can do to the drums. I mean, that's really cool. That brought out so much energy and obviously brightness along with it. Um, a bit of compression. All right, so we got the drums to be like a world's better in my opinion in terms of like overall tone um, and character life. This acoustic guitar needs something and I think it could use uh, just like some standard consoles kind of stuff. So let's immediately go to the SSL 4KB. Um, I find myself using this 4KB all the time lately uh, with the width knob I think it's really cool this preamp saturation is great and so if you don't know about this you should because it's amazing um, but I'm just gonna try to bring something out of this acoustic guitar we might even add some like reverb to it as well Uh, may, I feel like some some compressions in order and let's see if like this distressery kind of thing uh, does something cool. Yeah, cool, there we go. So this is kind of where I'd want it to live. Yeah, without it, it just is just a tad too dynamic. And then uh, the SL4K just kind of adds a bit more, you know, you're kind of just getting some console kind of direction there. I find if I use like a console emulation or a console based kind of plugin and you use that EQ, you're getting pushed in the direction of whatever kind of moves you'd be limited to if you had that versus something like a digital EQ, you know, that you'd find like the stock logic EQ kind of thing. I feel like these guys also could definitely use some of that SSL action and we're gonna put them on both bring up both jewies jewies or gooeys let me know in the comments i don't know why i said jewy This lead guitar, I feel like it needs a little something something as well. Let's give it a little air.
Let's see on this other lead if fresh air can give it something. At the beginning of the track here, you've got like this swelly thing. I think it needs a verb as well. So let's go back to that verb suite and bring up something cool. I really like the models that they have here of the 480. Um, they've got like an RMX 16 kind of thing. Uh, but let's see, let's just go, we need ambience here. So do a 480. Sometimes I play it safe, sometimes I break the rules. When the darkest night it has me headed for cover, the thunder's beating down, yeah, weight on my shoulders. Pretty cool. Um, one thing I really love, and I don't know that this will be like a great example of it, but um, the SLG3, this is a new thing. And the G3 is amazing because it's basically like three independent G buses and you can use it as a multiband compressor. But one thing that I really like to do with it is use it to kind of like really emphasize the high end um, to get some clarity out on the, on the master bus. And what I do is I just power off these other bands and I bring this band up to like way up in the 11K range, 11 and a half, 12, somewhere in there. And then I just play around with the ratio. There's no rhyme or reason. I play around with ratio. I play around with attack, play around with release and threshold until I get the kind of sound that I want. Sometimes I'll solo it and listen to it. Yeah, so you can really kind of go heavy handed with it. Again, we're playing with a rough demo here, so give it your graces there, but you get the idea. Um, oh yeah, SSL DS. So the SSL DS is one of my favorite DSers right now. I've been using it now for a handful and pretty much since it came out. So like just listening to the vocal, I'll just give you an idea of really what it can do. So here, you know, you kind of select your bands, how you want it to focus and react, and then you kind of choose how it recognizes the signal. Uh, that you're selecting and then you know how much DSing is it doing and you got this like brighten algorithm which is really cool because you've just darkened it up but this will add that brightness back in so let's fool around with this sometimes I play it safe sometimes I break the rules so we've went way too far with the DSing but check out what this brighten knob does Sometimes I play it safe, sometimes I break the rules. 
When the darkest night it has me headed for cover lot of stuff you can do with it really love that one now this one is not this one's probably not the like sexiest one but ssl uh drum strip what i find myself using it for a lot is adding low end weight it's got a like a listen mic compressor kind of thing built into it but it's also got a transient shaper which is cool let's fool around on this kick drum and the gate is really useful i love the gate so you better be listening with headphones on here for this one but if you're listening to the kick drum it in and again i'm showing you heavy-handed going crazy with it because there that you can really push things very far with this processor and with a lot of these processors and so if you're if you've got a subpar recording you have a lot of room to bring it out and and get something from it and use this processor to take a bad recording and, and maybe push it in the direction of making it sound good so this is um this is a new one from uh the slate team and uh i don't know much about it let's see what it does so i've got it on my master bus here I'll say this right off the bat, immediately there's like some sort of like compression thing going on and I kind of like it immediately, especially with the way that these drums were recorded and how they sound, so it's doing something cool. I just like really taking these drums and make them like super punchy. That's cool. I really like that. And it's so simple. I love the simplicity here. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. That made those bad drum recordings immediately better. So on the drums, on that note, say you have your drums and you want your drums to sound a bit old, Virtual Tape Machines has got you. So check this out. Let's listen to just drums for a second. warm crunch obviously we're going super heavy handed i think that's kind of the theme here super heavy handed a lot of crunch a lot of character and that's gonna push you in that direction um, and then of course you don't have to go that far with it again we're kind of dealing with a track that is just a really raw demo um that's kind of all i had on short notice here but uh kind of going back to heatwave this is as i'm just kind of thinking about the overall session all the different stuff that i've stumbled across in this new bundle this is kind of the star of the show right here it just it's cool it's so simple I mean, it's dramatic what you can do to a track with this. Wildly interesting, wildly interesting, I'll say that. As I kind of wrap up toying around with all of these for the kind of the first time for some of the slate kind of things, um, there's definitely a th 
there's definitely a bit of a theme with some of their own design plugins. Like a lot of plugin manufacturers will base their plugins off of existing hardware. But one thing I find really cool with some of the Slate stuff is that there are really easy to grasp, grasp tools that do their own thing with really simple controls. That's cool. That's how these units that are sitting in the rack became famous. They just had their own design, did its own thing, and then it became famous for it. So I think some of these tools are kind of taking that approach and I, I think that that's really useful, really handy. The virtual mix rack having all sorts of modeled hardware in there uh, and they're doing it in one processing unit, like one plug-in unit, you build whole chains. That's really handy because you can go to one spot, reach for everything at once. I think the final thing that I'll say about this is that, you know, you've got so many different tools and types of tools in a similar category. So you've got plenty of different compressors to choose from. Some that do a similar thing, like the 1176, they've got a couple different models of that, LA-2A kind of thing. Obviously SSL EQ models across slate versions as well as SSL uh, specific ones. And, ha and again, having the two different tools is gonna come in handy. It's going to come in handy when you know, you go to grab for one and it's not quite doing the what you're going to want to do for your program material. You reach for the other one and you're going to go, wow, okay, yeah, that one works better for this situation. And that's what you need as a pro. And this bundle has got that. So if you're just getting into production, if you're just building out your home studio for the first time, you've just got your interface, you've just got a microphone, and maybe you've got a couple plugins, but you know you need more. It almost doesn't make sense to buy one-off licenses. These plugins are definitely expensive. And if, as soon as you get just a handful of them, you're pushing over a thousand dollars. And when you look at the subscription model, you know, you're talking about like eight to 10 years worth of subscription based off of those purchases. So your options are get five plugins or get eight years worth of all the plugins. And then once you factor in the fact that over that time, you're gonna be getting all the updates included. If they put out any new plugins, you're gonna get those as well. There really are a lot of benefits to the subscription model once you kind of look at the economics of it. And I won't sit here and tell you that subscriptions are perfect because there probably are situations where it would make sense to just get licenses, but for the most part, it's essentially like buying one plug in a year and you get the whole house. And as software evolves, as Mac OS updates to the new version, you're still going to get your licenses of these latest plugins, the latest updates, etc. So there really is a real value in these subscription models and this harmony between SSL and Slate Digital really takes the cake. There's nothing else like it out there on the market right now. So you'll certainly be seeing on my channel a lot more of the Slate stuff. You'll certainly be seeing a lot more on my channel of the SSL stuff. SSL has already made its way into a lot of my workflow for my clients, for my client work. And I know that privately there's been a lot of subscribers that have le reached out to me and you know, I talk about them a lot there, but but yeah, off the top of my head, those are just kind of the quick reasons as to why I think the subscription does make sense moving forward. So there you have it. Uh, there's still so much that I could unpack and talk about in this particular video, but I wanted to make sure that I kept this concise. I truly believe that if you're considering a subscription, there is not a single better offering out there right now. So check it out, SSL and Slate Digital just about every possible plugin you could think you'd ever need in one subscription. Now let me know in the comments section if you agree, if you disagree, what you think of the offering. Also, I just want to give a big shout out to the SSL and the Slate Digital guys for giving me this opportunity to share this with you. I'm always humbled and grateful anytime a company reaches out to my channel and says, hey, what do you think? Share this with everyone. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much. And as always, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.